Hey guys and girls, my name's Alan and today I'll be doing my first impressions video for the Uncharted 4 multiplayer open beta. Now at the time of the video going up, the beta will have finished, uh, probably quite a while ago, uh, knowing me and my schedule. But um, hopefully I'm going to try and get it up as soon as possible just so that obviously I can share my thoughts and opinions with everyone. And also I might actually share it with the devs as well because they're looking for feedback for the beta and I have quite a lot to say. So, uh, as I said, lots to talk about and not a lot of time to do it in. Uh, straight off, this game is a little bit weird. It's a 2v3 match and I figured more players would drop in but throughout the entire game it's just me and uh, the player on my team versus the other three players on the opposite team and it stays like that for the entire duration of the match. And uh, well, I won't spoil the result but let's just say uh, we do quite well. Uh, it's a good partnership. So shout out to you if you're watching this video, Frosty. Uh, so as you can see I'm using the sniper rifle and I do manage to get down using it uh, but the thing that annoys me about this sniper in this game, well this particular sniper, is that it's a bolt action but it's a two hit kill if you don't hit him in the head. So if you shoot him in the arm, in the, in the torso or whatever, it's a, two hit, it's a two hit down, sorry. So you have to hit him twice with a bolt action sniper, which is absurd as it is. And then you have to finish them off by hitting them again to, to confirm the kill. So if you think about it, it's a three hit kill with a bolt action sniper. Just think about that for a second. A bolt action sniper, that's a three hit kill. I mean... That's just crazy. Um, so in this game, obviously, when you get downed, you, you've got a chance of either being revived by teammates uh, or the enemy's player has to confirm the kill by putting you you know, down permanently. Um, but I think headshots in this game should probably uh, take away the down factor because it doesn't make any sense that you get shot in the face and that you can still be revived. Uh, I think that balance, that would actually balance quite a few of the weapons as well. So the snipers, for example, a major disadvantage in this game uh, well, the one that I've used anyway, uh, and so I think having a down feature, I mean having, getting down normally if you get hit in the body, but uh, no down if you get hit in the face, that's my opinion. Um, so there's quite a few more changes, I've got a list, I'm just going to run down it quickly. Uh, grenades are now on a timer, which I do not like, because it means you can't use them as often as you'd like, especially if you're playing objective based game modes or if you're trying to attack an enemy, uh, you know, a stronghold or something. If, you're, if, if you've already used your nade recently, you have to wait for it to recharge. Um, and that's really silly because, get this, even if you die, the timer doesn't reset. So it really limits the amount of grenades that you can use in a match. And yes, you could argue that it stops grenade spam. But on the flip side, from a tactical point of view, it is, it is really bad uh, for like trying to get enemies out of entrenched positions or even defending yourself against an attack you know what I mean like the amount of times I've tried to use a nade and I can't because it's just not recharged yet and the, the timer isn't exactly sure either it's quite long it's like I think it's like a 60 second timer by default or something so if you think about it a match lasts about maybe I don't know five to six minutes you can only use what five nades in a match unless you upgrade it I know you can upgrade it but again I think just by default the timer should definitely reset when you die uh, and I think well, I prefer the pickup system, to be honest, in previous games, where you just replenish by picking up ammo. Uh, but anyway, moving on. So, weapon handling, uh, some of it's good, some of it's not so good. I think the pistols, well, the pistol that I'm using, the Power 45, is the only one that I use, handles quite well. But then you've got some of the ARs and stuff, and it feels like they're a bit floaty. They're not they're not quite 100%. And I don't know if that's just because of me, or because of the weapon system, uh, combat system, or because of the guns themselves, the recoil patterns and stuff like that. So it's possibly still early days, easily tweaked I think, but one of the things about it that annoys me a little bit is the, the amount of kick that you suffer when you get shot. So if, you're, so if you're shooting an enemy and they land a single bullet on you, your recoil goes way high. You start shooting the sky, I'm not even joking, and that's a little bit that's a little bit annoying. Um, I think it should be, yeah there should be, obviously there should be some kick if you if you take a hit, that you know, goes without saying, but it shouldn't be as, 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 as high as it is. Um, in terms of connections and stuff, in previous Uncharted games, you know, you'd always get those sort of um, encounters where you'd shoot a player, they'd shoot you, and you'd both kill each other. That still occurs in this game, don't get me wrong, but it happens a lot less than it happened in those two previous games, so that's a good thing. Okay, so moving on. Um, there's no running in this game. That's really weird, I don't really understand that. I thought, and I think a lot of people might agree with me, that running being added to the Enchanted franchise uh, from from 2 to 3 was actually a good thing so I don't understand why they decided to take that away. Um, I think in general your character does move a little bit quicker when you're when you're like full on walk like 
you, there's a walking pace but when you push up on the stick like constantly you sort of go into like a jogging mode which is a little bit quicker than the previous game but that is as fast as you'll go there's no more running so a bit of a backward step there no doubt i'm not really understand the thinking behind that as you can see one of the things that uh, i'm using on the screen right now well just a second ago was the El Dorado statue and that's part of a slew of the new additions to multiplayer so you've got sidekicks you've got uh, you've got more types of gear you've got more types of um, well these are called mysticals time to kill as you can see stupidly fast depending on the weapons you use uh, I think that weapon is the Metler and it downed me there it, it seems like two hits but I'm pretty sure it's a three hit kill so it could be lag or something in this game but I mean as I said, the weapon balancing can be fine-tuned in, in the future, so it's not too big a deal, but um, it just feels like uh, sometimes you do go down a little bit quicker than than you would expect to go down. So there's no more power weapons now on the maps. They don't spawn in any RPGs or anything like that. So that's a good thing, because I find that uh, with certain teams, you, they would just camp the power weapon spawns, and it sort of changed you know, the, the dynamic of the match uh, whereby you were fighting for it they were fighting for it you were camping for it they were camping for it and it wasn't that fun to be honest um, I don't know what's going on but sometimes when you shoot when you down a player and then you finish them off their body just goes flying and uh, one of my highlights collection videos is going to feature quite a few of these funny clips so if you want to see some of my uh, funnier uh, funnier confirms then be sure to check back and uh, and check out the video uh, so yeah, um, doo -doo -doo. and I understand it's a type of play style, but I just never really, I never really appreciate those sort of matches because I, I think I feel it should be about the objective and not about playing for the power weapons, even though they can obviously you know change the tide of war. Uh, so you earn cash, and cash can then be used in the in-game store, and then you can buy either you know uh, your equipment. You can upgrade your equipment, sorry, so like you can upgrade your nade recharge time, you can call in sidekicks such as uh, uh, chokers or the brute and snipers. I've talked about these in previous videos, so I won't go them again. And then you can call in things like the mysticals, like the Eldorado statue and uh, Chintamani stone and stuff like that. And these are all good additions, I think. Um, I'm not too sure about the pricing structure though, because the price does go up, but if you change classes, to say like if say you were using the Eldorado statue and you wanted to change class if you went over to the Chintamani stone or something the prices would then be back at the normal prices and then I think if you change back to the Eldorado statue the prices would reset again so I think either keep them all as one set price and just make them a little bit more expensive or they need to sort of counteract that so that if, if you used any sort of mystical the prices of all the respective mysticals would then go up uh, to sort of keep it balanced but again that's minor adjustments that can be made um, oh, speaking of sidekicks, actually, so, again, I think that this could be some adjustment to be made. So the Brute is meant to be like a heavy hitter, like, quite powerful, quite armoured. He's not. Uh, every time I've seen him on the, on the map, it's easy to avoid him. His damage is quite strong, but again, it's easy to avoid him because he's A, really slow, and B, not very heavily armoured, so you can actually take him down quite easily. And if you've got more than one person shooting him, he'll go down in seconds, I'm not even joking. And that's not even including headshots, by the way, which put him down stupidly quick. Um, so I think also to mention about the equipment, so you've got things like grenades and trip mines and stuff, and that's all good. They've increased the number of things that you can carry, uh, which is which is good. But uh, certain things need to be balanced a little bit. So I think the blast radius in the mine is a little bit much. Um, the, the the nades explode a lot quicker now than what they did in previous games because there's no tossing back feature, uh, which is a good thing. But I think they explode a little bit too quick. Uh, sometimes it feels like a nade comes in and you can't do anything to avoid it, um, even if like you just like rolling or jumping or whatever. And uh, finally, speaking about weapons, there's actually no weapon swapping anymore. So in previous games, if you died, you drop your weapon, your primary weapon, or actually whatever weapon you're using. And then if a, 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 another player came along, they could swap out what they've got to, to the one that you currently, to the one that you had originally. But uh, in this game, there's no weapon swapping. I think that might be because of the loadout system. So in this game, the way that you work, it works is that you, you pimp out your character by picking a certain number of equipments, mysticals or whatever, uh, and then that's it. And it has to total a certain number of points. Or you can't go over a certain number of points. Um, and what weapon you pick uh, has a different value of, of how many how many points it costs to, to equip. So it might be a balancing issue, but at the same time, I feel like if you're a low-level player or you know or something, and you don't have access to these good weapons yet, 
the fact that you can't even you can't even pick them up from other players, I think that's a little bit harsh. Uh, and it's it's always nice to just try out other people's weapons to see if it's a good fit for you. I mean, that, how else are you going to learn, right? So I always used to do that, and I still do that in plenty of the games I play. I always swap out to someone else's weapons just to give it a shot, just give it a try. And I'm not sure if modding returns. Um, I hope it does because some of the weapons could do with different mods. I think modding is, you know, is, is a good thing to have in games, and I hope they haven't taken it out. Otherwise, that'd be another step back. Um, which I wouldn't understand and so yeah I mean like I said it's, it's just nice to try other people's weapons and loadouts and see how they play alright I'm really conscious that we're running out of time here um, and I've, I think I've reeled up all the negatives that I was thinking about there's probably going to be one or two more that I think about in the future but those, I think those are the big ones um, so let's talk about some of the good stuff before we end the video uh, so graphically the game's great I think movement is a little bit more fluid, sometimes the climbing is a little bit slow, sometimes the swinging is a bit slow and stuff like that, but possibly that can be adjusted. I know that there's a, there was a difference between beta and chart 3 and final and chart 3, so that's not a problem. Install match is good, loadouts are good, character models I think are really good and you know how they look and stuff. Weapon handling I've already mentioned about it could be improved a little bit, taunts are really good. Players and AI actually do call outs now which is really good as well, I really like that. So they, you know, they call out enemy locations and you know, incoming dangers such as nades and stuff like that. Um, teams always spawn opposite sides of the map at the start, which is you know, that's nothing new. But the locations can change, so you won't always spawn in the same location, which I think is really good as well. Offers you a new different approach to trying to you know to start a new match basically. Uh, no more power plays. So I mentioned there's no more power weapons. There's now also no more power plays. So that's really good because in the chapter three, power plays just dragged out the length of the match basically, and, and it just made it s to the point where you just got annoyed because you just want the match to be over. If you were losing, you didn't want the match to drag on. But that's what power plays did. Sometimes you'd bring it back, but most of the time it just it was just a waste of time. And so I'm glad that those are gone. Um, addition of the radar is good, and I think. They've changed it now so that there's more treasure drops. It used to be just one chest at a time in the Chide 3. But in this one, there's at least, I think there's probably five on any given map. And you can just rotate and just collect them as you go along. And I think so that's going to increase the number of treasures and, and cash that you earn through those sort of drops. And also, I think players sort of drop a bit more as well, which is also good. And also, oh, good thing to mention is that the melee has been improved. So it's a lot quicker than it was in previous games, which is which is good. But also, it's a bit more balanced now, so it's no longer a two-hit kill; it's a three-hit kill. And what they've done is they've introduced a charge melee system. So if you if you hold down on the grappling hook, uh, you could use that as like a one-hit melee kill. And so yeah, uh, I think that's most of the things I want to talk about. There's, there's a few more things, but we haven't got time, so I'm going to wrap up this video now. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to be uploading a couple of highlights collections for the Uncharted 4 open beta. If you fancy seeing those, then stick around or subscribe if you wish. If you enjoyed the video, consider tapping that like button. And until next time, thanks for watching and take care.